6.30 p.m. Albuquerque time, um, 6.35, and it is who gives a damn your time. Okay, um, today we're going to do something a little bit different because otherwise it would be consistent and you would actually learn something. Um, I'm looking for a um, client-side JavaScript astronomy library. Uh, that is something that can be used in the browser, not on, in Node.js on the server. So have I found one? N I don't know. Uh, there is this thing called orb.js, which looks pretty interesting, and I wanted to explore. And uh, since I needed to waste your time, I decided I'm going to come on uh, to the stream while, while figuring out what it is. So we're here at the repo main page. We're going to create a new one. And we're going to create an HTML, CSS, JSS. And we're going to call it uh, Twitch. Orb, JS, we'll just call it that. Um, and while we're at it, let's see. Well, it should actually be fine. Twitch Orb JS, create REPL, magic is happening. And there we are. Not very exciting so far. Now, uh, Twitch does have a feature which lets you pull from GitHub, I think, um, or did at one point. So we're, we're going to try to just pull everything from orb.js's uh, github uh, if we can find it but that shouldn't be really too hard because i found it earlier today and yeah um we actually do have to go to google.com because orb.js is theoretically a domain okay here we are um okay Here it is, and I actually didn't know earlier whether it was a, um, oh, early development, don't trust these numbers. That's not cool. Um, that's very not cool. But anyway, um, let's see. So what I did earlier was most popular JavaScript astronomy libraries which is what this is. And I think Orb J AstroJS, was I thinking about AstroJS? Probably not. I'm pretty sure AstroJS is actually the name of a, a, a paper that references a library that doesn't actually work. So that's always fun. Uh, Astronomia is definitely a uh, server-side library. I looked at it. It does not look like it'd be easy to convert to client-side if it were server-side. So I don't want to touch it. Um, now this year, JavaScript library for astronomical calculations. I think is my own question. Um, oh, actually it's not. Uh, let's see, astronomy, meteor, astronomy, uh, orb.js. This is pretty one, I'm pretty much, I'm sure this is the one I want. Um, there are others, and I think this one, I kind of cheated and looked at a little bit, and it seems like of all the things we're going to do, this is going to be uh, sort of the best one. So I did a copy link location. I know you can't see my mouse, but um, I did a copy link location. And now, if things are going to go well, which they won't, we can just do a really very nice of a pull from right here um, in 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 GitHub. Let's see. Um, let's create a Git repository new. Oh, they might have disallowed this. In which case, it's going to be a freaking pain. Um, actually, there might be. Nope, it's not what I want. Uh, sorry if the screen's a little bit small. There is. We still have that problem of. Um, of the dimensions not quite matching, I think. Um, th I'm in a v window inside of a VM, so it looks kind of strange. Okay, so what the hell was that? Nothing you could see. Um, okay, um, I know there's a way to do this, except there might not be. And I think I've done it before, unless I haven't. Let's see if there's another option here. Oh, here we are. Okay, no, those are just the standard ones there. Files. Okay, well, at one point you should have been able to pull from a git, and if you can't, we can upload stuff and still make it work, but it's going to be very ugly. So let's see if we can actually just use, um, keep that one there. Um, hopefully you can't see what's on my screen. Yeah, you can't. Okay, cool. It's actually kind of weird. I can't see what's obscured by this window that popped up that I'm getting rid of on my main machine, but you can actually see what's under it because I'm only sharing that with you. You're special, um, but only in the small bus sense. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and here look for um, 
pull git to replit. And if we can't, we'll just download it. Um, and we can just upload it as a bunch of files. Ugly, but it's not undoable. Um, so there's a... Um, th they have done this before. They might have discontinued it. Um, um, let's see. <coughs> Control Shift P. I don't think this is actually going to work on ours, but we can try it. Um, create a new REPL. There's an option to enter a GitHub URL. Oh, really? So maybe I missed it. So let's go back over here. Oh, where are we? See, now we have enough tabs that we have to scroll. That's always kind of a bad thing. So let's see, new REPL. HTML. Oh! There is. Um, okay, so let's try this. Um, let's be actually nice here and actually delete um, the REPL I created by mistake, uh, partly because I want to give it another, I want to re give it, you reuse the name. So delete, yes, delete. Cre reload, and it's gone. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create a new REPL. Uh, HTML, CSS, CSS, okay, and now we're going to actually cut and paste in. I might need to start uh, pinning tabs, because I'm using so many of them. So this is uh, this, and we're just going to put that in there. And, and there's no need to really describe it. Here we go, and it's a one-way import, so we're not going to push anything back to the sky. And magic is coming in. Cloning. Lizard, I don't know who Izana is. I think he's the guy who made it. And I don't even know if that I pronounce it right or if he's a guy. So, you know. Um, let's see. I think we now have it. Beautiful, gorgeous, marvelous. Um, now can we get it to work? <laughs> who knows? Um, so over here in index.html, uh, we can go after all this meta crap, uh, blah, 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 blah. So here's where we're going to... Well, actually, we can probably put this all in script.js, I think. Uh, except almost we can't quite, because we have to do our script sourcing here. If I remember correctly, there's a really nice sort of a min... Um, there's a really nice sort of a min object that he has that lets you... Uh, I'm going to call him him, because uh, I think it annoys feminists, and I don't really know whether it's a him or a her. So somewhere in here, there's a very nice... There it is, a min, and you can just sort of include... Um, there it is, orb v2 min js. I don't know why I'm trying to, um, so this is going to be, oh, very ugly, which is fine. Um, let's go back to index. We really don't even need to look at this stuff. We, should, we just need to script source it. Our web pages, yeah, we'll wait. One of the bad things about uh, replis is if you look at a really large file, um, yeah, and it tries to, you know, format it nicely, which it did. It's all beautiful, but it's also kind of a waste of time. Okay, so script source equals from our path build slash min slash orb, and this should actually get everything else. This should actually get all of the other sub-libraries and stuff it needs. Um, or it should fail miserably. We'll find out. So it's for, for our very first run. See if there's any console errors. Um, no, we actually seem to have gotten past that little hurdle very nicely. Um, oh, and I'm sorry, the script source should be in the body, just like the other script source. Um, doesn't really matter, but, you know, for consistency. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, fantastic. Now I'm going to go ahead and close up the build and the min subdirectories, because they're way too deep, and we don't really need them if we're going to use the documentation, which I'm hoping to do. All right, so script.js, let's just make sure everything is hunky-dory, as they say in Japan, by printing out the phrase hunky-dory, which is actually hanchi-dori, which is a street in Japan. In Tokyo, actually. Okay? Beautiful. Everything is working fine. Okay, great. So now that we uh, presumably have this library all loaded in, let's see if we can actually use it. And I think, um, let's unpin this tab. Um... 
unpin this because we're not really doing any of this anymore. Uh, unpin this. We will leave this pinned. Orb JS. Okay, so why don't we see if we can actually um, cut and paste their code from right here. And this actually does make it look very much like it might be a um, Well, I don't, I don't know if we want to cut and paste too much of this stuff. But uh, let's let's do some of it. And uh, we have other stuff to do with this. Uh, we're going to try to determine the subsolar point, which is the point where the sun is overhead, and then compare it with the piece of crap that I did earlier uh, that shows when the sun is overhead. So let's just do a control C here. This is probably going to be too much code. This is probably going to be not... I'm going to be using things that it doesn't know how to deal with. Uh, document form is undefined, right? Because we're not actually... We're not actually doing any of that stuff. So let's go ahead and just do var date. So I'm going to probably make this a bit wider here. Um, okay, and I think all of this stuff we actually want to be console logged. So we're going to console log date. Um, well, actually, date's a built in JavaScript. So why don't we console log time? That might be a little bit more interesting. And all this good stuff. So I think any of this is document form because we don't have a document form. Uh, we're going to get rid of it and we will just print it out as a console log. Document form. So, of course, a lot of this is going to just compute stuff without actually doing anything with it, which is uh, probably fine because um, we can print it out ourselves. Uh, the TLE is a two line element satellite file. We probably won't be dealing with that much, but um, but we'll leave it in for right now. But our interest is more going to be in the sun and moon and where they're overhead, and uh, that the subsolar and the sublunar points, and uh, that will let us tell it where the moon is up and where the sun is up, and even things like twilight, nautical twilight, astronomical twilight, all that good stuff. Um, wow, it's a fairly long example. Let's uh, let's see if um, that beeping sound, by the way, is unrelated to what we're doing. You can ignore it, much as I should be ignoring it. All right, let's go ahead and run this. Orb Solar System is not a constructor, so let's see how far up this problem occurs. Okay, so Orb Time works. Um, orb Solar System is not a constructor, so that's pretty bad news right here. Um, and the question, of course, is why is Orb Solar System not a constructor? And the answer might be because we need to include more more source files. I don't um, I don't know what exactly what Orb JS includes. Um, Orb V2 JS should include everything else. Maybe it doesn't. Now I could look at all this stuff in REPL, but it turns out it's really ugly. And since I'm using a VM, I can actually show you guys, you know, without losing anything. Uh, some other stuff here. We're going to use our magical shell. So where are we? We're in this directory. We're going to go up a couple of directories. We're going to go here into the main directory, and we're going to do a git clone. So um, we're just going to clone this uh, this REPL here. Um, we can there it is, and then I can look at it on a local host using Emacs or whatever I want to do. Um, Go ahead and do that, and it's going to should clone into orb.js, so we won't be writing over the the home directory. Okay, that wasn't didn't take very long. Um, so now let's go ahead and go into. I think it's build min, but let's find out. There we are. All right, so let's see if orb v2. According to this, it should be everything. But let's see. Um, okay, that is really ugly. In fact, since we are using Emacs, we might as well just load this thing in. Isn't that clever? Um, okay, and it does look like solar system is not defined here. Not a problem. So now we're going to do is grep minus L. We want to. Uh, oh, I, I'm inside of it less. That's why. Okay, so let's just do a grep minus L. See where the heck solar system is actually defined. And I'm going to make it I L because I hate to be in case sensitive. Which min file do we need? Um, not good. So let me make sure I have it correct here. Solar system. Orb dot solar system. Well, gosh darn it, all the heck. Um, let's 
go ahead and do it this way. And again, we're going to... Interesting. It's not in here. This is going to stop us pretty much dead in the uh, the water here. Um, I don't... It, this should be loading everything. So let's go up a level here and see if maybe... Uh, um, yeah, this is one of the... Sem well, you know what? Maybe I can. Um... What can I do with this? Control, oh, well, that wouldn't be Emacsy very much of me. Nope. Alright, well, you know what, we're just going to cut and paste. And here we just need to say star JS, because obviously we're not, uh, these aren't minified files. Awesome! Okay. Let's go up a level here, and let's go crazy with this. So we're going to ignore case, and we're going to, um, recursive. We just want to list the files where solar system occurs. And v1 solar system js. So maybe that is the thing we need. It does certainly seem like it is defining what we need. So okay. So not great. We we should uh, you know, we should have had that included in the in the original orb v2, but it wasn't and I think we we can kind of deal with that. So script source equals v1 v1 is actually version 1 and it's uncompa in uncompatible and incompatible with version 2 but apparently you still need it for some things um, apparently you still need it for like solar system uh, js and stuff but in general the author has said I've read this separately from where we are now uh, that it is incompatible so this might work orb storage is undefined well wow, that is just fantastic um, no, you know, now no, no, we know how to do this. Haha. <laughs> and I, I get the feeling that maybe this author has not uh, been... Yeah, maybe uh, I can also uh, actually do what we're supposed to be doing. Um... So apparently we need v1 core.js as well, and I'm getting very suspicious that maybe v2 is not really what we think it is. So let's see if we can... Oh, what was that? Core? I always forget stuff. I should have a slightly longer memory than this. Oh, it is just core. So let's see what this does. I. The uh, main thing I'm going to do once we get around to this is we're going to sort of look at the accuracy because I've computed declination of the sun very accurately and I've thought about just creating my own package for it. However, um, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not vain, uh, although that song was about me, by the way, just so everyone knows. Um, but I, if my, mine is not that much more accurate, then I'm not going to use it. If it is a lot more accurate, it, it means I should use it. Of course, there's a bajillion, uh, you know, JavaScript libraries out there. Uh, this is just one I'm going to test because it seems to be easy to use and easy to be used client side. Although, ooh, although at the rate we're going, planet loader is not. Oh, let me guess. You know, what? Can you guess? I bet you can guess now. I get the feeling we have to pretty much do everything that is in. Um, whoa. Planet. Okay. Well, that's. Planet loader is not a function. Well, that's distressing because that's the only place it appears. Well, you know what? Planet loader. Well, see, now it looks like planet loader is a function right here. We are including solar system.js now. Maybe we're including it in the wrong order. Um, Let's see, we're including it. I mean, it looks like this is the right way to do things. Um, but I'll go ahead and load it first, although the core should not really be depending on something like that. Okay, now let's see what the problem is. Planet loader is still not a function, which means maybe one of these, um, one of these script sources is not going well. Um, Solar system planet loader v1 
core and then just our own uh, stuff here. So let's see, should we... Yep, let's do the old binary thing. This is an HTML comment, by the way, a very strange beast to, to HTML comment out JavaScript source code. At least I think it's very strange. Okay, that's beautiful. That totally works. So now, and I don't think it's R script that's causing the problem. Well, actually, it might be. Because R script is the first thing that actually calls um, here. Yeah. In fact, let's make sure that planet loader is a function. Oh, I think I know what might be wrong. And this isn't going to work because there's no file called hello. Um, yeah, good, good. Morb isn't defined. That's, that's perfectly fine. And I think, I know, there's two problems here. Whoa, 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 I keep forgetting we're not in Emacs. You're not in Emacs anymore, Dorothy. Okay. And this should give us the same orb is not defined. No, that is not what I expected. Um, okay, well, I think the problem is um, there's a namespace issue here. Uh, we're sort of um, if this is if this is Node.js, we're kind of cheating because Node.js can do things like export and import uh, namespaces and client-side JavaScript. I have no idea actually if it can or can't. That's just like kind of a a mystery to me. Um, but let's see. Planet loader is not a function in Solar System JS 19.2. So let's go ahead and take a look at Planet loader here again. Uh, it is a function. Now is it inside of something? Solar System JS. So according to the Solar System JS is calling it at uh, 19.2. Let's take a look at that here. Um, it certainly looks like it's being called here, and yet it's saying this is not a um, not a function now. It might be that this is orb solar system um, because we're inside of orb solar system here. Um, orb solar system or or function, uh, all this stuff. So it's possible uh, that it wants it to be called something like um, kind of position. It might be like orb solar system dot something. So that's not super cool. But um, let's see if I can. I'm hoping some of these functions are so independent of. Um, yeah. And the problem here is orb tool data loader data loader option var data. Yeah, this might be looking for actually a uh, server side file that actually wants to open a file. The files are here, uh, but unfortunately. Uh, they are in, as far as client-side JavaScript is concerned, uh, they are on a server somewhere. They're not local to the file, no, not, not local, because we don't, we're not storing them on the user's side. So it looks like this might be a, a total failure here, uh, unless I can see, um, yeah, this would get ugly. We could, in theory, load the VSOP files um, simply as strings. And let's just take a quick look to see that we do have the VSOP files. I'm pretty sure we do, actually. Um, and I think under data, actually. Uh, new. That's interesting. Maybe under source. Um, well, why don't we just do this? Huh? 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 Mr. Smartass. Oh, well, okay. What we're going to do here is we're going to say... Okay. There it is, v1 vsop, and these are the these are the uh, these are the vsop files in JSON format. Um, now we might just be able to stick this wholly in uh, as a um, as a variable name. See, right now it's just pure JSON, but we could, in theory, at least um, assign it to a variable name. And you know this is this is the sun obviously because it says sun in front of it, um, and and do something like that. But I think that's going to get really ugly too. Um, and so and we could of course convert the file loads into URL loads, but that gets 
has other problems with it. So I think uh, very early in this stream, let me see how early it is. It, we have been streaming for, oh wow, 25 minutes? Really? Time flies. Okay, um, we're going to give up on this. We're going to say that we're not going to be able to use orb.js uh, as, uh, as, as is as a client-side library. It does have some really useful uh, files in it, useful subroutines in it that we might be able to use uh, in building our own client-side library, but but not actually uh, what we need. It is not in, in and of itself a, a client-side library. So let me really quickly think about whether I want to... Um, let me take a quick look at the usage file here. Um, there's no compatibility v1, which I which I knew. Um, orb planetary orb core orb v2js. Well, all right. I'm pretty sure this is not going to be what we need. Yeah, and that's not the minified version, but I don't think it's going to help any. Um, and I think somewhere in here I saw, like, there's no package.json file, which made me think originally that it might not be um, a node node program. But apparently, despite not having that, it, it is a node program. Um, and I'm just curious if we could get it to, um, if we could hack it in enough with v1 to get it working, although at some point you've got to say, you know, I could write a better library than, than this myself, and in fact, I probably could. Um, so loaded vsubdir equals blah 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 data loader option var data equals tool loader <sighs> return data. So this might be nothing more than just reading through all of the files um, and and returning them as a big chunk of data. So. Uh, Actually, what was under v1 vsop, yeah. So, these files are pretty big, but I don't think they're... Yeah, so, I mean, and I understand how vsop works. We could actually do this. These are uh, sines and cosines you can add up to get something's position. Uh, but at this point, I think we're going to sort of give up on, um, on vsop, on orb.js. Uh, instead, let's go back to what we had. Uh, let's go back to um, several possible things we can do here. Uh, I did actually have a um, almost ready, but not quite ready, uh, set of arrays we could put into JavaScript and have it uh, do interpolation computations, uh, which is really useful, especially for the sun, and uh, which has very precise right ascension and declination that is not easy to calculate. It's not difficult, but it's not that easy either. Same with the moon. And if we could do that, we could we could start building our own little astronomy library that's good enough for what we need it for. Uh, however, for right now, let's go ahead and go back to uh, that isn't ready. So let's go ahead and go back to what we had before. The um, well, why do I have Colette's crap in there? The Twitch OSM leaflet, which last time, if you remember correctly, big big change of uh, venue here. Big big change of uh, change of uh, what is it? Uh, whatever something paradigm. Okay, so last time, if you remember correctly, we had and actually, let me go ahead and um, bring it out in a full full, full window. We had this, a sort of a little buffer that would paint, uh, which would paint depending on how far away you were from, say, uh, Albuquerque. Uh, or whatever location we chose. Now, the thing we're noticing here is it's, it's a little slow, as in insanely slow, and I think we said we were going to look to see if we could speed it up a little bit. So let's just see what it's doing right now. Leaflet, Rosetta, lib, 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 lib. I like saying lib. Um, buffer map. So we had a nice, uh, we had a nice um, update view. Math random. Oh, um, right. This was so it would every so often report. Uh, what it was doing. And this might be actually too much to be reporting. This might be slowing it down, um, although it shouldn't be really. But maybe the printing is slowing it down, so that's one thing we can look at. Um, it's a good thing to start with, because you can always blame printing for a lot of good stuff. 
Uh, console log, we won't need this. We won't need this. Um, and I think that will get rid of some of it. Um, well, let's just run it now and see what, what's still left in terms of, uh, in terms of console logging. Yeah, and how much of it there is. Okay, so we have Delta Gamma. Okay, we have a lot of stuff going on here because I remember we had a lot of problems with this. So let's go ahead and get rid of all this stuff. And I think this might have had some of it. Um, so we're really getting aggressive here on the console log commenting out. Now, the one thing I could do here is turn these into debug functions and then have a debug function that simply only prints if a certain value is set. Uh, that would be sort of the right way to do it. And if um, I'm not going to do it that way because I'm bored right now, which you would think, you know, I, I'm, I mean, I guess I'm feeling this is a bit tedious. So I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of them entirely for now. I'm going to comment them out so we can get them back if we need them. Um, the URL cache is going to be interesting, and that might actually help us with this problem of slowness, assuming that it is not the uh, all the console logging that is doing it for us. Um, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, I think all of our real problematic console logs are here. Uh, right, these are the ones which I gave uh, Latin, or perhaps I mean to say um, Greek, not Latin, uh, names because we were testing and it wasn't working, but now that it is working, they're just slowing things down. Maybe. Um, Again, we're not going to do that. Okay, I'm hoping we can get it down to where it's printing almost nothing or nothing at all. Exactly nothing. Uh, sort of a lofty goal, but let's see what happens. Run. Gorgeous. Nothing is being printed. Let's go ahead and reload this here. And not bad, not bad little slow. Oh, not not too bad. I will... A little bit of slowness here that I'm not crazy about. But, um... But actually quite, uh, quite doable. And you'll notice that when we zoom in, the, uh, the zoom lines get tightened up because we're calculating pixel by pixel regardless of, uh, regardless of how deep we go in. Well, this is not terribly exciting because, of course, you can't see the rest of the world. Um, so let's go ahead and add that back in, and of course we're going to make this a little bit opaque, a little bit translucent, rather, so you can see through it and under it. Uh, so let me go ahead and go back here, and I'm going to do a save as zip because I'm paranoid and I want to... And I'm downloading a zip for the first time on this VM, so I'm going to say save file and do this automatically from now on so we won't have to proceed this dialog. Okay, so um, let's see if anyone's watching here. Good, no one is. I get really nervous when people watch me stream. There was an onion joke about a streamer who gets nervous because he thinks no one is watching him stream uh, instead of everyone is watching him all the time. Okay, um, Okay. so now what we're going to do is we're going to go back into index.html here. Uh, let me see if I can... I'm going to add an opacity to this one, and I think, I'm hoping that my uh, function uh, that uh, that makes this maps buffer blah 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 map uh, the one that update view that overlays equals blah 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 at map um, okay one thing I don't like here is apparently we're not ever deleting anything we add uh, which actually will should be visible now that in the um, in the in the opa in the non-opaque version, except, of course, just beautifully, I've decided not to implement opacity yet. But we can fix that pretty quickly. Let's go over here. And really, this is just place computed tiles on map, blah, 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 blah. And I think I even tagged them, don't I? Mm, tag F Tom, yeah. Um, push overlays. Turn, turn. Okay, now for some reason I do have object opacity set here, and um, it's not working. Let's see. 
Get zoom, blah, 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 image overlay. That's the URL for it, the opacity. And am I doing something wrong here? No, the third parameter should be uh, allow me to set opacity. So um, kind of curious as to why that's not working. Let me go back here and make sure that I've not screwed anything up. Uh, latitude, color function, ramp, opacity. Oh, extra params opacity, right? Because let's see, tile function is buffer function. Nope, extra params is actually goes to the function that the computing function. And opacity is a property of the map, not a property of the computing function. Although I suppose you could argue it's a, um, but I'm not going to, that it is a, actually a property of the computing function. All right. So, gorgeous. Yep, and I think you can see the problem here. Um, okay, so it starts off opaque. If I shift it over a little bit, it gets darker, darker, darker. Uh, and I think that's because we're not deleting the overlays. We're overlaying stuff into it itself. Um, so let's see how we want to fix that here. Um, update views. Um, for right now, we're going to do it in sort of an ugly way because we're tagging all these as ftom. So what we want to do basically is when we come into the um, and return. Oh, it actually returns an object with overlays. So. Okay, so back here in index.html, uh, when we do update view, this is going to be ugly. Um, so these are the overlays. Um, place computer tabs on miles. Um, add the overlays that you're given. And then, ah, here it is. Um, I mean, I think you can see my cursor, so it should be okay here. So then we uh, want to delete all the overlays that are named, uh, that have ftom as a tag. Uh, the problem, of course, being now all of them will have that. We need to basically let overlays equals blah, 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 blah. So really, when we come here, um, overlays might already be defined in the global namespace. And if it is, because th these are the ones we get from the map, the previous run of the map, we could get rid of them right here. Um, and again, I'm not tremendously happy with that because uh, we really we want to paint the new ones on, on top of it and then get rid of the old ones uh, instead of getting rid of the old ones and then painting on top of it because that will cause a little bit of a sort of a repaint issue that we don't want um, at the same time. Who cares? Well, let's go ahead and do it that way now. So let's we'll actually go ahead and delete. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and delete uh, all of the, the F layers, and then we're going to redraw them. So let's see if this works. OK, well, I'm not getting any darkening. That's good. Zoom, not any darker. Zoom, not any darker. Hey, takes takes a second, but not any darker. Okay, still pretty stupid. Oh, ooh, no. Yeah, I'm not crazy, and it's actually we're not even seeing the disappear reappear because it's happening fast enough not to cause a problem. Um, okay, again, still pretty boring because we do not have uh, we do not have uh, the you know the um, open street map on top of it. So let me see if we can do something a little bit. Let's see here. We have um, um, date view, maps buffer, map each layer. OK, so this is actually just the thing that draws maps from line 67. This just actually draw, draws um, draws maps overlays. It doesn't, dr it doesn't only draw maps buffer. It doesn't draw anything else. 
Ultimately, we want to loop this so it draws other stuff automatically. Um, and I think what I can do here is actually create another map. Uh, and we're going to go back to index.2.html where we stored all this crap. Just get the OSM map going. And the OSM map we don't need to update because uh, the leaflet already has a built-in process that's doing that, hopefully. Okay, so let's see. Oh yeah, this is to fetch data, which we're not doing for right now. There we go. Um, so the map is still going to be the map. And I think... And this makes me really nervous. But I think we can just use this code and get... Um, so this is still the big map that we have. We're just going to add it to the map. Um, I'm pretty sure we can assign an opacity here. Let's find out, huh? And let's see what happens if we run this. Nothing. All right, let's try that one more time. Actually, that was something. And nothing. So let's go ahead and do this. Run. Console doesn't like it. Well, that's not that's not the worst thing I've heard. Um, tile layer, HTTPS ping, opacity. I wonder if the second one has to be a an object. Because like, that might be the issue. Wow. Got that one right. Okay, so there we are. This is a little bit slower than I want it to be, so I'm not super happy. And also these these how big are these freaking rings so clearly these rings are so big that they're unuseful to me at this exact moment let's make them a lot smaller let's give us give ourselves like a 5 10 and 15 mile ring so we can really kind of play with them and uh, let's see what our I think our color let's see, color function is ramp um, Oh, good. We decided to, um... Okay, so these are in radians, actually. Um... And that is what we're feeding the ramp function. Radians. So... 2 pi over 40,000 happens to be the uh, number of, of radians. Um... What I really like to do is make some sort of rainbow here to make it more interesting. If I oh, I think we're going to cheat. I think we're going to cheat. Okay, somewhere in here I have a function that does not do what it says it does. I mean, none of them actually do. Um, I want to convert um, a spectrum, a rainbow color, to RGB, and the way you do that is a uh, very complicated formula that I don't know, so I made one up except I don't think I put it in this uh, in this library here so I think we will have to ignore it for right now um, and it, it actually the formula I use works okay if you're using the rainbow colors but it doesn't work if you're using a saturation or brightness value of less than one um, so let's go back over here then index.html yeah let's Okay, well, five uh, kilometers, uh, the, the circumference of the Earth is uh, is uh, two pi, but it's also 40,000 kilometers. So if we take five over 40,000 times two times, I think it's math, pi, 
I I come on give me a break here please tell me that they define math pi do I have to define it myself okay I'm gonna just pretend math pi is defined and if it's not I'll cry I didn't seem to complain okay good now it should be like about five kilometers in diameter means any second now we should be seeing there it is awesome it's not really the center of Albuquerque I've chosen like a, a random spot um, now one thing you might wonder here is uh, as we zoom in here I wonder if my house is in this circle anyway um, is why does this look why is this I don't know if you can see the hand on the map but why is this wider than it is long and again this is because it's a Mercator map and uh, at 35 degrees north latitude which is where we are uh, and pretty much at every latitude that is not the equator, the uh, degree, uh, it, the uh, east-west space takes up more space than the north-south space. And that's just a known uh, thing about uh, Mercator maps. Uh, that's what keeps the angles accurate, but at the same time it distorts the size. That's just like a fundamental property. All right, so if that one works, let's go ahead and make this one um, 10 over 40,000 times 2 times math pi. And we'll make this one 20 over 40,000 times two times math dot pi. Okay. Now if we run that now, invisible at this zoom level, which is fine because it needs and now you can see that it because it's taking up at least one pixel, it is starting to show up. And woo, shiny. Okay, and there you have it. That's how we do. Uh, that's how we do some some buffering uh, around. Again, the point we chose here was just sort of arbitrary. We could have chosen a point uh, like at the uh, Albuquerque International Airport or something. Um, so I think this is uh, this is this is good that we've got a buffer map going. Obviously, uh, our buffer map is pretty um, pretty generic. Actually, it's it's pretty useful in that it, we can actually do it for any. Uh, level of uh, you know any number of uh, of buff any number of buffers any colors of buffers that we want any color ramp and I'm just sort of curious now this line will keep going right up until you know one pixel resolution right up until the end and so even when we're at the zoom level here we're basically oh, that's about the highest we can get um, you know from that point that we chose as our center this is the exact division between two of the distances that I specified and so we'll go right down to street level because again we are why are we in another freaking page let's close that down um so that's how we would do um a buffer map uh now the next thing we might want to do is a vernoy map which is where you um where you try to find out where a given point is uh, closest to which of the, let's say five given cities um we oh boy do i want to do this Apparently, let me see how long I've been going here. This room for about 48 minutes. I think we can. I think we can do this. Yeah, let's do this. Let's go back to BC Maps, and it's going to be very similar to the um, uh, place computer tiles on map. Blah 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 blah. And the computer um, and the function we used here was buffer tile. And the buffer tile we're going to copy this code, and it's going to be a little bit different, obviously. But the buffer tile is going to be um, is going to be the uh, is going to be the come the Vernoy tile, and the Vernoy tile is going to take a list of um, a list of locations, lo longitudes, and latitudes, and uh, find you know for each point determine which which of those latitudes and longitudes a given point is closest to. So we're going to call that. Um, what does this do? Oh yeah. Map to tile ranges, that's pretty nice. Okay, so over here we're just going to copy the buffer tile and change its name, and we're going to uh, change its parameters to a little bit, but it's very similar, so sort of good to have the uh, code from buffer tile uh, as sort of our uh, sort of our preliminary code here. Okay. Now my big concern with this is it's going to be really slow, because if buffer tile is this slow, having to compute five distances might be insanely slow. And do we want to keep going? Yes, we do. It's a 
an X. I probably shouldn't have X that. I probably should have control C'd it. But anyway. Okay, here we go. So let's go up here. I'm going to probably make this a little bit wider, which will actually help with the uh, formatting. Okay. I don't remember that's. Uh, that displays a Vernoy diagram among given points. Okay, the input object will be x, y, z parameters of the tile. Extra params um, um, call it points. A list of long lat objects um, to construct the Voronoi diagram. And by the way, there's also something called a, a Delaney triangle. Oh wow, Who knows that word. I probably used it somewhere else. Um, there's also something called a Delaney triangulation, which we're not going to worry about for right now. Okay, that's cool. I don't know if we're gonna, okay. Um, and I think I missed something, so let's undo that. I think I missed a color function there somewhere. There we are, yep. Um, an array, so this is gonna be an array of colors, each corresponding to one of the points. Um, you know what, actually, should we put that in here because, um, no, I think it's better to have it separately. An array of colors, um, RGB arrays that are Sort of right about here, GB, not BB, GB, um, representing each point in the diagram. And we might even do something fancy like paint the point itself a special color. Uh, output object. And because this is like uh, one of those computer tile things, it'll just be the, uh, it'll just be the, the, the UR, it'll be the ping file essentially. So we start off by just declaring the object is empty. Um, uh, let's see, new image data. Uh, let's, see, let's, let's see. Huh. But long lat equals, so this is going to be the, the longitude and latitude of the point we're looking at. And now. We're going to find the one that has the minimal distance, which will require looping through all the points, which is painful. Um, but let's go ahead and do that. So we're in a triple nested loop here. Let's see, let's see, let's see what I want to do here. And I think we're just going to declare a, uh, an array to hold these. Um, no, we don't actually need an array. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the min dist. Um, and we're going to start at, I think we're going to start at plus infinity. Yeah, do we have an infinity? If we don't, we can use math infinity. If we don't, we can just use a really high number. Um, so for let k equals zero, k less than, I think it's, what is it? Object extra param, see this is what gets ugly, extra param points. Uh, length. Wow. K plus plus. Then we need to compute the actual uh, distance. And again, this doesn't have to, we can just do it each time. And uh, just uh, sort of thinking out loud here, I'm wondering if um, I could write code that doesn't require all this sort of crappy object extra params point length and then basically um, have these more deeper programs call those programs with uh, with the correct variables that would just be a very a technique to make life easier so the uh, that one and that two the long one are still going to come from the object itself the uh, long two here um, uh, no that's not right I'm sorry the long two and lat two will be coming from right over here, the, the pixel we're looking at. That one is going to come from objects, params, points. Wow, that is a huge ugly thing to say. Object, extra params, 
I'm definitely going to look into this uh, way of doing this easier. Points. Kth element. Uh, lat. Followed by... Oh yeah, it gets worse. Um, then longitude one is going to be the um, longitude of the kth point. So that's going to be object extra params point k longitude. There we go. And by the way, we also need to keep track of which index is the minimum. Uh, that's all actually all we're interested in. Um, and we'll just call it, we'll start with zero because if it is the least, it's not going to get changed. It, it's a, it is a possible value. Um, so just to, okay, so now we have to say if dist, so the only thing we really care about is if dist is less than min dist, then we do two things. Uh, index becomes, this is, becomes a new lowest value, and of course, min dist is now set to uh, this dist. Okay? Um, so now we know the index k here, so now what we're going to do is... Why? What is this? What is this match? Okay, I'm a little confused here. Because um, we still need to be in the i and j. Let this for... Um, oh yeah, here we are. This should end off the k loop. There we go. And now we take the color function and we evaluate it at index k. Um, so the color function will take, I'm going to call it val just to be consistent, a value of k. It's going to return RGBA, which is actually interesting because um, In theory, we could have a translucent map, a op non-opaque map, where some of the pixels are dimmer than others because they're using an additional alpha value, which is kind of cool. And then, really, the rest of this is so much so similar, we're almost tempted to take all of this and convert it into its own function that takes an array and returns a PNG image. And I think I actually had that at one point and got rid of it. So now, if this is going to work correctly, can pretty much guarantee you it's not. Um, we should be able to see a Voronoi tile, and we will, first of all, make sure I haven't broken anything, or perhaps more correctly, wow, I have not broken anything. Um, so I'm so happy about that, I'm just going to save this as a zip file. Oh, and I probably should do version control here and push. Um, um, added Voronoi tile. And I probably did some other stuff too, but this is git. No one ever really comments correctly, except for that guy who invented it. Who I'm starting to dislike, even though he's pretty cool. I, I met him once, I think, Richard Stallman. Um, or unless it's Linus Torvalds, who I've not met. But anyway, so we have this. So now we're going to create a, a maps of Vernoy. Of course, we don't have to call it Vernoy. That's just uh, that's just the name of the key here. Um, tile function here will be Vernoy tile. The opacity, we'll go ahead and leave it at 0.5. Extra params. Here's where it gets ugly. Points. And points itself is going to be an array now of, well, points. As you might have, might have kind of figured that one out. And so the points, what are the points going to be? Should they be just be something random? No, they're not. You know why? Because I actually have, at one point, written a program that tries to create a Renoi diagram, and it fails. Um, so now we're going to try to find it. Um, and that is actually... Whoa! That is what I really can do. That is not me. That is Brian Caps. Because BC Apps is just the name of my repo. BC Lib is the name of my whole sort of uh, project. BC Lib does not... Well, no, it's not. Uh, you know what? Maybe Barry Carter's name. I don't even know what the fuck my name is anymore. Barry Carter, that's me. Aren't I handsome? Uh, BC Apps... And somewhere in here there is a Vornoi test. Wow. Um, um, what's interesting is a lot of these programs don't do what they say they do. And I actually had a list of cities not here. So that kind of sucked. All right, we're going to find it. 
Yeah, because I happen to know that uh, it is in my, um, I happen to know one of the cities, and I happen to know one of the cities is Albuquerque, because I really like it too much. Um, PC Overdrive, Playground, oh wow, is it Playground? Let's find out. Might be it. Albuquerque, yeah, there it is. The points I was using for testing, Albuquerque, uh, New Mexico, Paris, France. Uh, Barrow, Alaska, the northernmost inhabited location in the United States. Wellington, uh, which I think is in New Zealand, and Rio de Janeiro, which is uh, not the capital of uh, whatever country it's in. I just learned that yesterday. So let's go ahead and copy. Th this is Perl code. It's not going to run, obviously, um, in Replit, but I can I can correct it. I can convert it to be in Replit. And if this works, I'll be well, shocked, actually, to be honest. So let's go ahead and put this code in here. Comment it out, because it's not going to work. Um, and now we can copy it down here. So the points will be... Um, let's see. An array. Longitude, minus 106.66, times... bclive.degree. Now, wait a minute. Let me make sure that I'm actually giving the longitude and latitude in... Uh, in radians, unless I decided to give it in, um, unless I decided to convert or something. So for the um, the buffer map, what am I doing? Nope, I did have to convert them to to um, to degrees, to yeah, from to radians rather. And this will be 35.08 times BC lib degree. Um, suppose if I'm being really, c and this is actually going to be the lat because we we do not allow sort of anonymous names here. We don't rely on order. And so this is going to be 48.87. Boy, if this works, I would be freaking shocked. And, um, and I think I broke that, yeah, because actually Harris is at 2.33 longitude just east of the prime, prime meridian. 48 point, that, wow, I didn't know Paris was that far north. Damn Europe. Uh, Barrow, Alaska, pretty far to the west, almost in Russia, in fact. Which is now actually called Russia. It used to be the Soviet Union and everyone just called it Russia. Now it's actually named Russia, so I'd like to thank them for fixing that. 268. And I don't really need all this precision here either because this is pretty much city stuff. Okay, Wellington, way to the east, almost as far east as, as um, Barrow is to the west. Um, Latitude, one of the few uh, cities, well, there's actually two of them in this map, that, that's probably one of the f more southern cities in the world. I don't know if it's the most uh, southern, but it's, it's down there. It's pretty far south. And then uh, the final one, longitude of uh, Rio de Janeiro is, it's further east than I thought. Um, and it's latitude, it's further north than I thought. It is in the southern hemisphere, but still. Okay, so now if that is correct, I can end the points array here, and the option extra params here. Nope, I don't think I can actually. Now we have the extra params. Th those are the points. Now we need the color func, uh, which is um, function, which is going to be um, which is going to be called color stuff because I'm just that stupid. Okay, and we're going to do this, that. Close off the array. Right, and I think uh, that's all we're going to need now. So that's the end of the uh, the object that we're sending, and that's it. Um, and we now need to define. We're going to have to clean some of this up, actually. Color stuff takes an object. And I think I'm pretty sure I said val, so if it's equal to zero, which is. I'm Oh, let's see, am I going to be, yes, I'm going to return red for Albuquerque. Uh, yeah. Um, let's see, actually, hang on. Let's actually be a little bit more clever here and actually create a color array and just return its index. Again, not really great, but, you know, whatever. 
So Albuquerque is going to get the nice red color and the last parameter is opacity. And then what color am I going to associate with uh, Paris? I think um, green for the Parisians. And then, um, oh, it's quiet. I actually don't have which ones. I think you have to have blue for um, for Barrow, Alaska, because it's cold. And then um, Wellington, New Jersey, uh, definitely a nice orange color, I think. I think uh, people who've been there will will say that I'm wrong. Um, that's going to be 255, 255 will be yellow, so this is 128, 0, 255. Isn't it amazing how I know that? And then finally for Rio de Janeiro, it's a big party city, which of course means it's yellow. Okay. And then here we can just say color array of object value. All right, so let's see what this does. Once again, if it works, you should be surprised. Uh, let's see, color function, color stuff. And I love the way it doesn't even bother to tell you where the error is occurring. I think I've mentioned that like a thousand times, but if I haven't, I'm mentioning it again. Oh, you know what? This is actually the end for extra. This is the end for points. Ooh, ooh, hang on. That's the end for points. That's the end for extra params. That probably does not need to be there. Now let's watch it break again. Okay, I'm suspicious. In fact, I'm so suspicious that I think I got rid of the the page that brought it up. Okay, that's already not looking too good. But let's make it you know let's make it look really bad on a much bigger scale. Okay, and now this one should be fully co color all around the world, obviously, because... Oh, you know what? I didn't put it into update view, because we're still doing a lot of this stuff manually. So over here in update view, and we're going to clean this up, so basically update view will be able to handle its own maps. Or at least it should be able to handle its own maps. Okay. Yeah, so I think what I need to do is... This is basically exactly the same lines as above. Um... In fact, I could probably even reuse the same freaking variable if I really wanted to. I'm not going to, but I could. Um, so over these two, we're going to say, you know, show me the, the tiles that are coming out of uh, Vornoy. That map. And then um, just slap them on top of that map for me. Run and... Console error. Good. K is not defined. Okay, that's good. K was actually one of the things inside of my, um, inside I had a triple loop going here. Uh, K is not defined. One eight hundred two sixty two. And now we have a very nice, beautiful sort of a number thing going here. Um, and actually that's not what I meant. I meant, uh, the uh, value should, of course, be the index that we have uh, that we have assigned, uh, because the k loop is actually over at this point. So let's watch it break again. Ooh, I'm scared. Okay. So as we've always suspected, the entire world is closer to Albuquerque than it is to anything else. Uh, no. This is freezing up a little bit because we are... Something's wrong here. Either that or just taking forever. Ooh. Have I actually pushed the capacity of JavaScript's ability to... Whoa. Okay, not cool. Alright, so let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Extra params, color function... Well, index. And the question is, is this doing its job? Um, and I kind of wonder if let dist is the correct way to do this here. Um, and I also wonder, let's see, if dist was less than this, we make the index equal to k, and we set the min dist 
equal to the current distance. And then if the next distance beats it, so that should work actually. Um, so let's see here, color equals, hmm, well, this is going to print out, well, this is going to print out way too much crap, unfortunately. Um, so let's limit this. Yeah, let's just limit this to the, the outside most tile. It's still going to print a hell of a lot of stuff. But if object z equal equal zero, and then object y equal equal zero, and then object z. So but the, this is the top level tile, by the way. Um, then console log index, and this is still going to be really ugly, but not as ugly as my sister. Just kidding, I love you. Not really. Well, yes, I do love you, but you, you're ugly. Um, all right, so let's run this sucker. Really, really slow. Okay, index zero, 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 and if I am um, gonna guess that it's always zero. Yep. Okay. So, what we could do here, that one is this, long one is points k long. I'm wondering if that's actually coming in correctly. That's kind of a extra param points k. So what can we go ahead and right at the top here, which is being only every time we're drawing a, a tile, let's go ahead and console log out um, extra params. And this probably won't do what I want, but we will fix it. Um, there we go. Beautiful. Now it's finally beginning to do the, the autocomplete it should have been doing all along. And because we don't want to get too much crap in here, let's go ahead and get rid of this other console log, even conditionally. So now, let's see if the after params are coming in properly. Um, I might have screwed them up. You never know. Yep, beautiful. They're an object object. So that's clearly not what I wanted, obviously. Uh, we are going to go ahead and use the var dump function that I hopefully have talked about before. Because if I haven't, it's going to look kind of funny. Uh, var dump. And maybe I haven't even defined it, which would be kind of, ooh. Points. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. That's what we want. We want, we want the points to be an array. Let's see what the points are. Mm -hmm. Well, that's technically correct. The points are e uh, an array of five objects. Now, what do we want out of them is range and lat. So, well, all right, well, I want to see what points three is. Aha, made you fool, you think? thought you were going to say one, didn't you? Didn't, whatever. Okay, so that looks like a perfectly reasonable point. Yeah, these all look like good points here. I'm, I'm happy with them. So why? Um, GC disk takes radians, right? I'm sure it does because I kind of decided it was going to. Okay. Uh, it's going to be an insane number of comparisons here, but, um, oh, you know, I'm now wondering if mindist infinity is a very valuable, um, yeah. Just less than min just equals okay. So what we need to do here is actually I think we're okay if we do this um, because we're going to do it sixty-five thousand blah 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 times. Uh, let's make sure we're out of the. No, we're not out of the K loop yet. We're out of the K loop here. Yes, we are. So here we can just say console log 
and this might be the whole issue and it might be that uh, infinity is not it can't compare to infinity nothing compares to you infinity nothing compares to you Sinead O'Connor actually Sinead O'Connor but funnier if you call her Sinead O'Connor uh, from the uh, from the 80s I think she might be still alive okay so here's the problem the min dist uh, it does not like being compared to infinity um, so the min dist the dist is never list less than infinity so that's the, uh, that's the issue there um, now the greatest distance on oh I'm gonna hate myself for this the greatest distance possible on earth uh, in radians is 2 pi but just in case we go crazy Let me see if that works. That might be a syntax error. Well, it's not a syntax error. It's just going to be really, really slow. Okay, that's not what I expected. Okay. Um, I think we leave Mindus like that. So now, if dist <sighs> well, the only thing you can see is that uh, GC dist is getting um, the wrong data. If dist is less than min dist, which it always should be. Well, let's be really obnoxious and just make this number like 999 or something. Still way bigger than 2 pi, so I'm not too worried. Um, but if now we see 999 and we know something something is wrong with the disk code. And I really don't want to print it inside here because we're going to have it printed five times per pixel. Yay! Um, and you know what I think is the problem? Because disk is not what I'm looking for. GC disk returns an object. And, oh, this is just beautiful, isn't it? I really effed myself up with this, deciding everything's going to be an object. Um, so it's going to be um, dist dist. So the actual index here is going to be, um, um, let's see. Let dist equal all of that, is which is an object, dot dist. And that should actually work. And here we should see a bunch of disks under 2 pi. Or the whole program is frozen. Or we've broken replit. Ooh, that worked. Um, and here we go, loading. Dun, 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 dun. It's gorgeous. I love it. This is exactly how... I have a wrong version of this that's based on a, on a premise that's inaccurate. Uh, that looks very similar to this, by the way. Now, I am zooming in, by the way, if you didn't notice, you can't, because uh, you can't see my mouse, but zooming in, and it's very, very slow, and I think, again, the issue here is um, I have pushed JavaScript's, my computer, my VM's JavaScript's computational abilities to the limit, and um, does not surprise me at all. Um, this is a very bad way of doing Vernoy diagrams by computing every point distance from something. There's, there are better ways to do this. Uh, I'm going to wait. And so this is sort of a nice triple point here that's equidistant from Rio de Janeiro, Paris, and Albuquerque. And there are other equidistant points here. We're going to wait. Um, now, of course, one of the problems here is it could be that it's my um, the Mindis printing that is taking forever, which is what I'm going to blame because uh, otherwise I'd have to do some actual work. So let me go ahead and stop printing. Let's go ahead and stop that. Um, so let's go ahead and just actually get rid of that real quick. So the printing is not going to be a problem anymore. I still think it's going to be really slow, but for, for because now it's fundamentally because it's slow, not because um, run, run like the wind. Gorgeous. I'm going to look at the results. I'm just going to reload here. You reloaded. Okay. Not too bad, actually. It's a little bit slow, for sure. I mean, it's not it's not going as smoothly as I would like it to go. 
and the triple point here actually appears to be like in the middle of nowhere and now this is because of course we delete before we re-add so it does take a little bit of a does make things invisible when it's slow as opposed to repainting and then removing uh, which would not speed it up any but it would mean that while it's redrawing we would still see stuff um, so not really terribly exciting there or there or even the the point between um, Barrow, Alaska and uh, Albuquerque which is I think in uh, Canada somewhere uh, it's gonna be like in the uh, yeah I think it's actually north of Vancouver so it's not really that exciting uh, and one way we can speed this up, by the way, is if we can use tile caching. Again, that doesn't actually speed up the computations, but it means you only have to do them once. Um, so, somewhat... Trying to see if there's, any, there's no point where four of them are going to meet. Uh, so this is Albuquerque, Paris, and Rio. Whoa, really? No. Albuquerque, Paris, and Barrow, Alaska, equidistant from uh, some piece of shit in northern Canada, where no one lives, maybe. Actually, I'm curious to see if anyone lives there. I'm going to zoom in. I am zooming in. Very slow. And it looks like, as I kind of thought I would have to, by the way, uh, we are going to, I'm going to have to find a faster algorithm for, uh, for Vernoy diagrams, and this is, uh, this is uh, the slowest sort of possible algorithm. It would be even slower if we had six cities, and in some cases you have like a hundred cities. And I think there's a JavaScript library that computes Vernoy diagrams um, that, uh, that would be very useful, at least to look at. So we're off the coast. This triple point occurs off the coast of uh, nothing. Pretty crappy map here. Okay, well, now we've been going for, I think, uh, an hour and 20 minutes, which I kind of want to sort of set the limit at that. Um, one thing I promised earlier that we still don't have is a way of controlling the opacity of the maps and showing which maps show up. Right now, we just have to tweak the code each time we want to do that, and that is not something we want to be doing. The other thing I said we're going to look at is maybe one of the really ugly things here is we have to sort of dig deep into the um, we have to do things like this to get to the latitude one of the points uh, which is clearly not what we want. Um, so we're going to see if we can have something that's a little bit easier than that. Um, so the, the two I think main parameters for next time will be one let's get some controls on here so we can decide which maps we want to see and uh, how opaque or uh, non translucent they are and um, try to find a, a better formula maybe for computing uh, which point is given you know which of five points is closest to a given point uh, that will be the stream for today thank you for joining me and have a nice uh, whatever the hell time it is where you are